Shit, man. Um, I want to read new poems for you because uh, it's Portland, and I feel like I, you guys deserve new poems. I've been here a lot. So um, the only problem with that is that all the poems I'm writing are sad, heartbreak, gay poems. Uh, hopefully that's all right. Has anyone ever been through a really bad heartbreak? And then, and then you realize that you actually weren't in a relationship? <laughs> helpful to know or not. <laughs> Drowning in a public pool, being chased down a crowded street, and not being with you are next to each other in the display case. The store smells like syrup. The salespeople are so patient. I am terrible with options. When there is nowhere for you to go, your bones become steering wheels. I say that like I know something about trauma. Not sure if I really know anything about trauma, but I did give birth twice. And I think it's because when the labor started, I couldn't escape my body. It's funny how when pain is creating something, we call it labor, but when it's destroying something, we call it trauma. I don't know if harbors are really safe places, but I used to use that word to mean safety all the time. When the very clean salesman asks if I want the picture of the lighthouse in Maine, I tell him about my grandmother who collects little lighthouses for her mantle, but she has never actually seen a lighthouse in real life. He just wants to know what is going to get me to cry. I said, give me the hotel where we fell in love, the phone call where you said you didn't trust me, and the harbor that I never was for you. Everything I know about safety, I learned from a woman who was first to give her, forced to give her first period blood to a satanic babysitter, and then thought it was appropriate to tell that story to her six-year-old daughter. A woman who gets out the Ouija board and pendulum for every life decision. What do I know about safety? My mom was the prom queen of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was the kid who found two metal folding chairs and went to sleep in the corner, baton twirler in her boyfriend parade. The only thing I was given clear instructions on was how to trick men into thinking I am beautiful and to never let one hit me twice. In the bargain basement, I find a checkered apron that says, kiss the liar, a clock with deadbeat dads on it, a curio case full of white liberal angels, honesty is never as important as a good story, a discounted set of privilege for the butler's pantry, talk pretty, feel later, matching mixing bowls, 12 kinds of rubber spatula, oh, look at this, not calling you, giving you space, you don't want a relationship, I swear you stole those from my closet and marked them up. You don't even wear them right. Remember when you said your body was created just for mine? I'm taking that home for my coffee table. I thought telling you my porn search words meant that I was ready to be vulnerable. I didn't know your stethoscope was so expensive when the bags become too heavy. I stand at the register in a cotton trance. The clerk scans slowly. Ma'am, there's nowhere for you to go. Ma'am, do you hear me? You can't buy your way out of your shame. You can't eat your way out of your hurt. You can't lie your way out of your guilt. You have to feel this. Do you hear me? It's okay to fucking feel this. When you leave here, you will have all of these things, but they are not you. Who you are at your core is untouchable, honest, whole, safe. Ma'am, do you hear me? There is nothing here we can sell you that you don't already own. 